years ago at a face meeting and I was sitting next to a, a distinguished colleague of mine who does face, not hair. He goes, you know, I can spot out transplants all the way. And I go, you really can? I said, the gentleman in front of you has a hair system and the one to the right of you has a crown transplant. And he goes, I can't see that. I said, I know because you, have it, you don't do hair. You don't start looking at unnatural patterns. And that's why when we're doing the lab, you're gonna start drawing things. You go, oh, I get it now. I see it. But part of the reason why this lecture is so important is that I get excited when I design hair. So hair is not boring. My colleagues say, oh, you just sit there and make little sights. It's, it's boring. I like to understand how hair grows. You heard from Dr. Beener a moment ago that hair is different in all different parts of the scalp. So we're gonna talk about different patterns that are there. Um, this, this is just to show you that hair grows in different parts of the scalp. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it up there in a moment and show you that with these different angles, that's how you need to recreate those recipient sites into which the hair is, into which the grafts are placed. So if you angle your sites all over the place, they will grow all over the place. Your, your staff won't be able to place into it and the results will look bad. And so this is just showing your hairline close up. These are recipient sites that I made. Oh, are we showing any? Am I showing nothing up here yet? So what do we need to do? Like oh, I was still, up? yeah, so, well, uh, not yet, but was there anything going, you guys didn't see any slide, did you? Okay, sorry. All right, well, don't, uh, let's, can, um, let's, yeah, don't, don't worry about this. Let's just go to our, let's just go to our uh, H, the if court. You know, what do you need to do this? What's that? What do you need to do this? Oh, okay, let me show you. Hey, Kenny. Okay, just hold it with that little thing if you don't mind. Don't take that off. I'll plug it in here. And we need to distribute the glasses. Oh, no, no, we don't. Huh? No? no, this no is glasses. 2D. This 2D. is 2D. Okay. 3D will be in the next lecture. Uh, I need you to sit with a, up there. Okay. Okay. So. I'm gonna spend a few minutes and just walk you through a non-balding scalp or a scalp that is not significantly thinning, he's got too much mousse. Can you go take all that out? I'm just here. <laughs> all right. Uh, and you're gonna hear more of these lectures, again, so don't worry if you can't digest all of this so quickly. But what I wanna show you is how hair grows in various parts of the scalp. We're gonna start with the hairline. Um, now he styled it here so it's harder to see all these little nuances here. Okay. What does this say? Okay. All right. So, it's easier for even a shorter hair, but let's, let's take a look here. Let's turn this way here. Can you see how the hairs go off at an angle? going forward, go right into this area. Let me see if we can show that. Yeah, uh, it's a little bit too much light. Let me see if I can take the light down a little bit. Move it out of the way. Good, okay. Yeah, okay, do you see, do you see how these come out this way? Okay, yes? Yes. Good. It's important because the, the trick with this is that a lot of times when we're making recipient sites, again, those are the, the, the little holes that accommodate the graphs, we make these sites too perpendicular. And on Sunday, and I please encourage you to be here on Sunday, this is not a bunk day, so don't get too blitzed out on su Saturday night because Sunday, it's really a good day. There's not a fluff lecture here, okay? And it just, it, we're gonna go through natural hairline thinking, critical thinking. So the, these angles have got to be low down. And, you, and when you're designing this, you can't almost make these too low. You can make them too high. And there are a lot of problems with that, so I'm not gonna get into all those details. But that's just one of the elements, and they all face forward, okay? Except for just here, at the lateral port. Look at this area here, it still aims, it still aims forward. If you take a look, these still aim forward. Can you see this? And these, only at the lateral centimeter, start to dive down and come down to this temporal point, okay? So the temporal point, when we use that term, defines this point right here. All of this is sort of temporal hair, all right? And then over here, 
it's all temporal here, but we, when we see a very balding man, what happens is this starts to recede. It's called the lateral hump because it looks like an upside down U, an area that starts to, to go downward. I want you to take a look at this. Do you see how these hairs go straight this way? Okay, now watch my pen. This is how hair goes down. Can you see this? I don't know if you, hopefully you can see that. Yes? Yeah. So it, it goes down in an arcing fashion. So I, I always like to describe this area right here where it transitions from the mid scalp over the lateral hump called the lateral crease. That goes forward and then down. And it progressively goes down to the point where when you're going here, it dives straight down. So this... Lift the hair? Okay. Can you see this? These almost go straight down. So this sort of cascade is what word I like to use, is cascading coming down describes this area right here. Now, for the central zone, it's going to be probably hard. Yeah, thanks, Kenny. Go down a little bit. You know, it's hard to see it. You know, we had to do a side angle because that's the only way you're going to see this. <laughs> this, I mean, a little rough. Kenny, you got to go back no, in. Go. What you so do? these angles start becoming a little more vertical. I don't know if you can see that. Let's go. Can you see this? Yeah. Okay. Actually, this is good. Can you see here? They're low and they go slightly up to here. They're not ever 90 degrees. So if anything, I always encourage people that when they start, and you'll hear it during the recipient site creation part of the lab, you can almost never make these too low, but you can make these too high. Okay, you can make all these looking like picket fence that, that look unnatural and create no visual density. So almost err on the side of being too low. But you can see there's a progression going up this way, like this, okay? What do you mean? Like this? Like, yeah. Make a part like this yeah. from okay. the front. Move, move the head out of the way, guys. Okay. okay. Yeah, so, yeah, I think I that's a good see to see. I position myself. You can see it? Okay. Oh, yeah, that's good. Good, 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 good. Can you see that? The angles are here, and they go slightly up progressively like this. Okay. Let me keep that part down. I really want you to try to memorize that shot if you can. Okay. And do this on one another. Look at each other's scalps. It's very, very helpful to see this. Now we're going to go to the crown area. Can okay, I'm going to have just turn all the way around here. And I'm not going to make this more complicated by showing you everything. These are the key things that I want you to see, and I'm going to summarize it for you. This now, is this is going to be hard to see this. Why? Because you got too much stuff in your hair, my man. I'm moving. Just take it off. <laughs> all right, let me see. And I'm going. It's only spray. It'll move. All right. Where's the whirl part of this? All right, it's really hard to see the whirl pattern here. Really, can you see it, Amina? Some okay. Here's a point now. This should create a whirl, but it's hard to see the whirl. Um, to be very frank with you in this situation, but if you look, these hairs go this way. We can just do something. Yeah. Thank you, Amina. There we go. All right. Starting here a little yes. bit. Mm -hmm. So these, you see these hairs going up this way? Okay. And then these hairs go down this way and then this way. And these hairs go up this way and this one goes this way. These go up here. All these little movements are creating this sort of a whirl pattern in the scalp. and, and and I like to make these angles higher here and lower here. I don't know if because these need to blend down, and then these areas go up almost vertical. They start angling down this way. Okay. And the other thing important is that you remember this area where we were a moment ago, the, the lateral humps, where they dive down like this. There's no abrupt transition in the scalp. That's another very important thing. Is I, when I'm making ang sites, I don't do this. They all just blend. So like when I'm making this angle to go to from from the crown out to the lateral hump it's a st gradual transition as this goes up to the mid scalp as it, it starts to go up and straight so you're gonna see and hopefully when I work with you on recipient site design I don't see you make radical angle changes in most cases um, there are a few exceptions that we don't need to talk about for the sake of beginning it's it's pretty much a very smooth transition going over to this hump going forward and then going, you can almost, you see these going down this way. Now that we've gotten some of the gel out, you can see that this goes down this way, okay? And that's some really, really important for you to understand how hair uh, moves. So we're gonna, that's good, I think. Good. 
So um, let me just finish with this. She's aiming at me. So let's just finish with a couple uh, comments here. The key point is that hair grows differently in different parts of the scalp. There are no abrupt transitions. That the angles in the front are straightforward. They don't splay open like this. They go forward and low. The temple area here cascades down, okay? Uh, I didn't really show the temple point, but is that too complicated? It's fine. So at least you get the, the, the ideas of that hair grows in different parts of the scalp. Uh, and that's a very, very important concept. You know, let me, let's do this. Let me go and use the schematic uh, because I think it's going to be helpful to see the live thing and then go back in schematic. Hey, Dave, back there, could you pull the schematic up? My, I pull back the, the, 